Hi everyone. Um, I'm looking at um, the uh, Holy Spirit as the life-giving spirit. Um, sort of looking at what Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament versus um, very early church in Acts um, and then what the emphasis became in um, the epistles uh, and it's it's an emphasis on the Holy Spirit as the as the life-giving spirit as opposed to um, Holy Spirit coming upon people and manifesting in supernatural ways but rather the the inward manifestation of the work of the Holy Spirit in our uh, in our inner man in our um, in our spirit and our soul um, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction I hope it's quick because I've got to make dinner um, and we'll just have a look at it so John 10:10. 10, 10, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So, um, you know, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people and made them prophesy and other things. He, even a donkey he spoke, <laughs> thanks to the Holy Spirit. Um, and then after Jesus' resurrection and when the, the church began, um, we were indwelt by the Holy Spirit. People were indwelt. The Holy Spirit joined to the regenerated human spirit and became they became one. And um, so it was an inner thing, but also gifts were given. Um, supernatural gifts of the Spirit were given. Um, which were outward manifestations and um, sort of similar to God, the Holy Spirit coming upon people. Um, and there was a lot of emphasis on that in the early, very early part of the church um, when the message was spreading um, throughout Israel and the surrounding nations. Um, but uh, when you get to the epistles like Corinthians um, yes Paul talks about gifts, spiritual gifts but he, he does it in a de-emphasized way and then tries to point them to the inward spiritual life um, and you can see in 1 Corinthians 1 verses 4 to 7 where he's saying the Corinthians have all of these gifts and knowledge and um, they, they lack nothing. So I'll just read it. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they were very spiritually gifted, and they had a lot of knowledge, and um, were not lacking in that sense. Um, and then, but then, very shortly in, in chapter 3, Paul goes on to say in verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So um, they had all these spiritual gifts, but they, they lived carnally. They operated car carnally. Um, and he couldn't teach them deeper spiritual um, things because it it takes the you know the verses of saying um, it takes 
the Holy Spirit to give you discernment to to help you understand the scriptures without uh, the Holy Spirit giving you understanding your carnal mind can't comprehend it and so they were just operating in the carnal minds and were not able to discern deeper spiritual truths they were not walking in the spirit Um, so Paul tried to emphasize to them um, the the inner spiritual life walking in the spirit and tried to help them to understand what that was all about um, and take their focus from the spiritual gifts the outward manifestation where the you know the Holy Spirit comes on you and you prophesy or you heal someone or you whatever um, and more on inner spiritual life because they're not the same thing and um, much of the church has ignored this inner spiritual life and particularly the Pentecostals are focused on the outward manifestation of the spirit um, but what we need is the the life in us to be we need to be turning to our spirit and um, walking in the spirit by focusing on the things of the spirit and not on the carnal things the whether it's your sin or just your self efforts or the outward manifestation of spiritual gifts um could be anything really um so in first corinthians fifteen forty five, and so it it is written the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam which is jesus was made a quickening spirit so the king james says quickening spirit but just about every other translation um uh, more helpfully translates it as the life-giving spirit and if you look at the greek it kind of says that as well so the holy spirit became the life-giving spirit or jesus became the life-giving spirit um the holy spirit is the spirit of jesus um there's many references to the spirit of christ and you know they're the same they're two entities jesus um the physical jesus and the spirit jesus but they are one and we have Jesus living in us as the Spirit. Um, and He is the life giving Spirit. He gives us life within us. Um, Romans 5.10 For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled shall we be saved by His life. So because... Um, the, the problem of sin was dealt with when Jesus died on the cross um, and was and resurrected. Um, that r- reconciled us to Christ. Um, it removed the barrier between us and God. And now he is free to be our life and indwell us. Um, in the Old Testament, he didn't indwell anyone. Um, it was through the death, burial and resurrection that the barrier was removed so that he could become our life, the life giver inside of us. Um, and if he didn't, if, he's, if he wasn't planning on becoming our life, then there was no need to indwell us. He could have just saved us from sin, basically, and then left us as is. Um, like Old Testament saints had their faith in um, the seed and they weren't indwelt so indwelling is not required for someone to be saved but it is it is what God chose to do for the the body of Christ so that we could be one with him and perform a a special function um, in history and so we're we're so lucky to be in this time to be part of the church because it's it's just so much like to be part of christ 
in Christ and him in us is is just mind blowing and you know in the Old Testament they just observed God from afar and could never approach him but we actually have him in us it's just mind blowing so he wants to be our life and to provide daily salvation in in life so we shall be saved by his life and that's not just a one off thing we're reconciled that was that was our salvation really but we are daily saved by his life by the spirit in us giving life each day and washing us and renewing us um, cleansing us Romans 8 2 for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death so I just wanted to put that verse in to show you that the spirit of of life in Christ Jesus um, yeah he it, there's references to that actual phrase the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and Romans 8 10 sorry 8, 8 10 to 13 and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness there it is again the spirit is life and he is in us but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you and there's the quicken word again which you know we don't use that in normal English these days but it's like the quickening spirit the life-giving spirit and so here um, you could say he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also give life to your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you so his, his spirit in us gives us life um, in our mortal bodies therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if ye live after the flesh ye, so, ye shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live and obviously um, we know that we can't lose our salvation so this can't be saying that if you don't mortify the deeds of your body you're going to hell um, it's this is a day-to-day -day salvation from um, a life an existence of death in life uh, I don't want to say life because life is 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 the good thing but daily death where you're focused on your carnal self and your sin and um, walking in the flesh versus life which is walking in the spirit and focus on the things of the spirit um, uh, it's a daily salvation a daily source of life um, so yeah the the emphasis of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in the epistles is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ as the life-giving Spirit giving us life each day and renewal each day and being a source of refreshment and, and life and peace. Um, I'm going to do more videos on this. Um, so this is just an introduction um, so yeah it's I have you know heard about this before but it's like something I haven't quite before got my head around and um, yeah studying it's going to be really good to really nail it down what what it is and it's 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 something that you never heard preached in a church and that is such a shame so um, yeah I will do more videos on this but this is just the start to show you um, the life-giving spirit and um, yeah I hope this blesses you talk to you later bye